Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're gonna be talking about functions as first class citizens. So over the last five or so videos, we've talked about functions, hoisting, and all kinds of other cool stuff. And now we're gonna talk about one of the key things of JavaScript, and that is functions as first class citizens. So it's a weird way of saying functions are treated just like any other object. So you may also hear this concept called first class objects instead of first class citizens. Same thing, don't have to worry about it. So what exactly does this mean? Well, there's a series of things you can do with functions that you can do with normal objects. And we're gonna be talking about that in this video by going through these examples. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So the first thing, you can assign a function to a variable. And we have talked about this with function expressions. So this is a function declaration. Well, as soon as you assign it to a variable, it becomes a function expression. So we could say let pizza, and then we can assign it this function, and then down here we can call pizza and pass in some numbers. Doing a refresh, we get 27. So that's the first thing. Assigning a function to a variable is something you could do with another object. So for example, we could say let things and assign it some object. This is just an empty object, but you can go and put stuff in it if you'd like. But that is an example of something you can do with a function that you can also do with a normal object. The second thing is you can add a function to an array. So let's first get rid of this pizza here. We don't really want to use that the whole time. So let's just clean it back to how we had it. And let's say we create an array. We'll call it cool functions. And what are we going to do? We're just going to assign it an array, but we're going to start with the value pow. So that's this function here. And now we can access the values inside of cool functions. So just to see that, we can say console.log and just pass in cool functions. Do a refresh and you can see inside of here we have pow. So we could call this, we could say cool functions index zero, and then we can execute it and pass in two values. Like so, save and do a refresh and we get the value 27. So adding a function to an array is the next thing that you can do with JavaScript functions. Next thing you can do is you can add a function to an object as a property. This is also known as a method. So for example, we can create an object, we'll just call it math functions, and we'll assign it some object, and then inside this object we can give it some properties. We'll say power, and we'll assign it pow. So pow is the function up here, but now we can access it through math functions. So down here we can say console.log, we'll say math functions dot power, and pass in three and three. We'll get rid of this other console log here, do a refresh, and there we go, we got 27. And just to confirm, it's coming from line 16 right here. The next thing is that we can add properties to a function. This one might be new to you. So because a function is just an object and objects have properties, we can actually add properties to functions. So what is that going to look like? Well, here we have the pow function. Let's say we wanted to describe this function. Well, we can actually say pow.description or whatever we would like and give it a value like so. This property could be used to explain what the different parameters are for or how to properly use the function. And then this can be accessed on this object. So for example, we can console log pow.description, do a refresh, and there you go. The next thing is that you can pass a function to a parameter. This is common with what are known as callback functions. So for example, let's create a function and we'll just call it callback example. And this is going to take a callback. Now a callback is just a function that's going to be executed inside of an, a function that takes it as a parameter. So we could say return callback three and we'll raise it to the fifth power. So I just said we'll raise it to the fifth power, but this is actually general. We could pass in any function we wanted to this function as a callback. But to use this, all we would have to say is callback example and pass in pow. So how's this going to work exactly? Pow is going to be passed in here and then it's going to be executed inside this function here. Do a refresh. Now the value that this calculates is going to be returned. So we actually need to do something with that. So we could console log it here like so. 
and do a refresh, and there we get the value, 243. So passing a function to a parameter is not something you commonly see in other languages. So for example, if you're using Java or C-sharp, you don't really do that. <laughs> but in JavaScript, that's very common with callback functions. The last one I have for you is that you can actually return a function. So in this situation, we're not returning a function, we're actually calculating some value and then returning that value. But just the same, we could return the function itself and then we can use that return value. So let's rename this, we'll just call this return a function and it's gonna have a function here as a parameter and then all we're going to do is return that function. Now, all these examples are obviously very exemplified, not necessarily 100% useful examples, but the concepts persist beyond just these uh, silly examples here. <laughs> uh, instead of actually taking a parameter, we can actually just return a function that already exists, such as pow. That'll make it a little bit easier for us. Now, what we can do is say return a function, call it, and then with the thing that's returned, we can call that. <laughs> So the syntax is a little bit weird. Let's say we wanna raise 10 to the third power. That's how you would do this. Do a refresh and um, I think we have to console log it. Yep, and then do a refresh and we get 1000. Wow, so that's a lot of stuff. So the first parentheses here, that calls this function. That returns a power function, which we then call with these parentheses here. So to conclude, the main things we covered, I think we covered six things. You can assign a function to a variable. You can add a function to an array. You can assign a function as a property of an object. You can assign a property to a function. You can pass a function as an argument and you can return a function from a function. So those are six things that basically set JavaScript functions apart from other programming languages and that's why we call them first class citizens or first class objects. Hopefully that was helpful. And yeah, that's all I got for you guys in this video. In the next video, we're gonna talk about how we can use one of these capabilities to our benefit. So thank you guys, I'll see you then.